If you're struggling with annoyingly slow, choppy timeline performance in DaVinci Resolve, then you should probably be using proxies. But what exactly are proxies? What do they do? How do you create them? And what formats should you be using? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this very video. Now, for those of you that are in a rush, <sighs> Open your project settings, go to master settings, scroll down, optimize media, change your resolution to half, change your proxy media to H.264, and then make sure this proxy generation location is on a nice fast drive. Save that. Go to your clips within your media pool, highlight as many as you want, right click, and then generate proxy media. Your proxy media will be generated. Then click on this little icon top right of your preview window and make sure you're on preferred proxies. Now you'll be using your proxies so you'll get nice fast timeline performance. Nah. Right, now for everyone else, let's get into that in a little bit more detail. And we're going to kick things off with what is a proxy? Simply put, a proxy is a lower resolution, easier to edit version of your original media. So then in DaVinci Resolve, instead of working directly with demanding high resolution clips which chug everything up and slow down your timeline, Resolve will automatically use these smaller, lighter, easier to edit proxy versions instead, which just makes everything run smoother and makes your life a whole lot easier. You can create them quickly and easily directly within DaVinci Resolve itself, or there's an additional app installed on your very system called the Blackmagic Proxy Generator, which you can use as well. And the great thing with using proxies in DaVinci Resolve, when it comes to export your video, you don't need to do anything at all. Resolve will automatically switch back to your camera originals so your exported video will look just as good as it possibly can. The only real negatives is you do need to spend that extra few minutes at the beginning creating the proxies and they will take up some extra space on your computer. Does that all make sense? Hopefully it does. Right, with all that out the way, before we actually start creating some proxies, there are just a handful of things that you need to set up within your project, so let's do that first. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve, and the first thing we need to do, you do this per project, but you can set up a template, is click on the little cog or gear in the bottom right hand corner to open up your project settings. Make sure you're on master settings, top left, and then scroll down until you get to this optimize media and render cache area here. We need to set the proxy media resolution, the proxy media format, and the proxy generation location. And we'll kick things off with the proxy media resolution. And this does exactly what it says on the tin. This sets the resolution that your proxies will be generated at. Now, the lower the resolution, the quicker the performance is going to be within DaVinci Resolve. However, the worse your preview screen is going to look. So you kind of have to find a balance between the two. We can select original, in which case the proxies will be made at the same resolution as our original media. So if we're using 4K clips, we'll get 4K proxies. Or we can go half, so we get half that resolution, quarter, 1 8th or 1 16th. Now there is another option called choose automatically. This will generate your proxies in the same resolution as your currently active timeline. So I'm currently on a 1080p timeline, so any proxies I generate will be generated at 1080p. But if I stay within the same project and don't change anything but simply select a 4K timeline instead, that exact same proxy will be generated in 4K. So that setting can be super useful if you're editing 4K clips on a 1080p timeline, but it's less useful if you're editing 4K clips on a 4K timeline, because then you won't be getting the full benefit of using proxies. So half is a pretty good option. Next up, proxy media format. This, of course, is the format that the proxies will be generated in. And this one is a little bit trickier. H.264 and 265 are very small, they're highly compressed, so they won't take up much room, but out of all of these, they're technically the hardest to work with, so you may not see the biggest improvements. Although if you're using Apple Silicon, any sort of Intel CPU with QuickSync, or an Nvidia GPU that's later than around a 20 series, you should be fine with either of those. ProRes is an uncompressed format by Apple, and it will give you really good editing performance, especially if you're on Mac, but they are pretty big. The largest will be 4444XQ, that's the best quality, with the lowest one, the worst quality, being 422 Proxy. And then DNX HR is similar to ProRes, will give you slightly better performance than ProRes on Windows, but less so on Mac. 444 is the biggest and best, LB is the smallest with the worst quality. 
So which should you pick? Well, H.264 is probably going to be the best option for the widest number of people. It will generate really small files and most modern systems will be able to handle that with no problem whatsoever. H.265 will give you slightly smaller files, but maybe slightly more difficult to edit, meaning you might not get as much benefit creating the proxies as you would with 264. If your system still struggles with those two files, then you could maybe try using ProRes Proxy or DNX HRLB, which is low bitrate. Now these will be easier to edit, but will take up much more space. They could potentially be even bigger files than your camera originals if your originals were H.264 OBS recordings or from a standard consumer level camera or something like that. So just be aware of that. If your original media is Blackmagic RAW or ProRes or a particularly high bitrate, or you're doing color critical work, then you're probably better going for one of the higher quality formats like ProRes 422 or DNX HRHQ. It's only if you need the best proxies in the world where you need anything more than that. For me, I have no issues whatsoever sticking with H.264. Boom. Then we've got proxy, generation, location. So across all of your different projects, when you create proxies, they will all go to this folder location. If we hit browse, you can see I've already got some folders in here and then you have to drill down to the individual projects and within the individual projects, you'll get your individual bins. Now this is quite handy because you can just delete all of your proxies in one go if you need to, but I find it to be a little bit messy. So there is a better way. Now, quick note, if you want to save everything you've done within here as a preset, click on the three little dots. You can save current settings as a default preset or save current settings as a new preset. I'm just going to hit save and then all we need to do, click on DaVinci Resolve top left hand corner and then go to preferences. Make sure you're on system at the top, then click on media storage and then you've got proxy generation location. The default is use project settings so it will use that folder we just looked at, but I prefer to set this to be proxy subfolders in media file locations. Because now whenever you create proxies, it will create a new proxy folder within the folder where all your camera originals are. And within that folder, we will have our proxies. This just keeps everything nice and tidy. You always know where the proxies are. And if you need to delete them, you can do just like so. <sighs> now that probably sounded more complicated than it actually is, but I wanted to explain exactly what was going on. Generally speaking, you'll set that up once and then you'll never really look at it again. So now, how do we actually create the proxies and how do we start using them to get our silky smooth performance in Resolve? Well, once you're all set up, it's dead easy. So all you need to do, you can do this for individual clips or you can do multiple at once. We're just gonna highlight them all, right click, and then come down to generate proxy media. We'll get this little box pop up and it's just gonna whip through and create our proxies for us. Once it's done that, it should automatically switch to our proxies. You can tell that because you'll get this PXY little icon against all of your clips to show you that a proxy has been created. If you have a look at your timeline, any of those clips on the timeline will also have the same thing. We've got PXY. So now anything we do, any editing we do, we're simply using those lower resolution, easier to manage proxies giving us nice, smooth playback. Now, just above your preview window, there's this little drop down. You can see the PXY right here. If we give that a click, we have three options. We can prefer camera originals, we can prefer proxies, or we can disable all proxies. So let's just switch to the camera originals. And now we're back using the full high resolution clips. You can see it now says HQ on all of the clips on the timeline itself. If we want to switch back to the proxies, we click a little drop down, prefer proxies, and that's it. Easy, we're working with our proxy files. Now, if you need to create more proxies, we can just go to additional clips within the media pool. We can even highlight multiple folders at once. I've got all of these clips, I'll highlight them all, I'll right click, and we will generate proxy media, and it's gonna whip through and create all of those proxies once again. Now, if I right click on one of these clips, I'll go to reveal in finder, which will take me straight to the originals, you can see we've got that proxy folder with our proxies within there. Now, when it comes to rendering your video out, there's really nothing special you need to do. So from the deliver page, we can just use one of the templates or we can just customize our render settings, add to the render queue, and DaVinci Resolve will automatically switch to the camera originals, giving you your output 
at its best quality. But if you do want to render a quick copy out using the proxies, so it might be a little bit quicker, if you just scroll down the project settings until you see advanced settings, expand that, there is an option within here, use proxy media, and then your render will use those proxies instead. Easy. Now, one of the downsides is you do have to obviously sit there and wait for those proxies to be generated, and you already need to be in the actual project itself and have imported some media. So there is another way, which allows you to kind of crack on with some other work, and you can just leave it running in the background, and that's the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. Now, this is installed on your system because it comes as part of the DaVinci Resolve installation, so let me quickly show you how that works. So I've deleted my proxies for these clips so we can actually see how this works in real time. And then if you just open your start menu, or because I'm on Mac, I'm just gonna search for the Blackmagic proxy generator. The generator will open and it'll ask you to browse a folder, but we're just gonna cancel that for the time being. Now, this is really simple. At the top, we've got processing so we can see the status. We've got our proxy format. This is a simplified version, so we've got H.264 8-bit 420 half res, we've got 264 8-bit 1080p, 265 10-bit 1080p, and ProRes 422 proxy, also 1080p. So you can simply select whichever format you want, like so. Then the important bit are these watch folders. Now you can add as many folders as you like into here. You can either simply click add, and then browse, or you can click and drag, which is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna grab these three folders, drop them into my watch folder. You can also do this with the top level. So I could drop this entire proxy workflow folder into here, and then it would drill into all of my individual folders, however you want to do it. And then we simply hit start. And that's just gonna go through all of the clips within all of those folders and generate the proxies for us. Now I can leave that going, jump back into DaVinci Resolve, and as it's doing it, you will see these PXY icons will start appearing because it's generating the proxies in the background. Resolve will automatically find the proxies. So now if we have a look at our timeline, everything is working with proxies. If we want to turn them off, we can do. Now, if I was starting a brand new project, I don't need to import the proxy folder. I can simply import a couple of these clips into this project. And because it already knows that those proxies exist, when I drop this on the timeline, I can simply click my little drop down, change this to prefer proxies. It will automatically find those proxies we generated previously and we are good to go. Now, something else that's really cool about this proxy generator is it will keep watching those folders. So it's already rendered everything that was there for us. It's generated our proxies. But if I was to go to this folder and just add some new video clips into here, the proxy generator will realize that new clips have been added and then it will go through and make proxies of those new clips. Now I found sometimes it takes a little while. I don't know kind of what the refresh rate is on this, but if it's not done it yet and you're still waiting, if you simply reshuffle your folders just a little bit, it will then kick it into place. It will search for the folders, look for new things and then generate the proxies for you. The proxy generator is also a really handy way to delete multiple of these proxy folders in one go. I've got my three folders added here. I can select all three of these folders and then hit delete proxies. Am I sure? Yes, I am. And it will go through and delete the proxy folder from every single individual folder that we listed. And that's proxies in a nutshell, but you might not even have to create them because some cameras like my Lumix S5 Mark II here, Sony A7IVs, the FX3, of course the Blackmagic Pixis and the Cinema Camera 6K, or even the little Blackmagic camera app on your phone actually generates proxies while you're recording. And then you can simply import them rather than having to generate them. If you're interested in how that works, click on this video up here to go check it out. If that video doesn't exist, it's because I've not made it yet. Subscribe instead, and that video will be on the channel very soon. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.